Welcome to Diego Knows. Uh, I'm Diego. And <laughs> yes, yes, uh, today you're going to get my spoiler review of Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay. <laughs> Where do I begin? All right, let's start off with the beginning. Okay. Spider-Man No Way Home is the third in the Tom Holland trilogy from Sony of Spider-Man. Uh, it takes place right after where we left off in Spider-Man Spider Far From Home, uh, where Mysterio uh, reveals to the public that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And so he's outed, all right? But he's got a girlfriend now, uh, and uh, now everyone's looking for them. The cops are looking for him. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, to start off with, uh, yes, I am a huge Spider-Man fan. He is my absolute 100% favorite superhero of all time. Always has been. I've been a Spider-Man fan since before I knew how to read. Okay, and watching those old 60s cartoons. And then when I started to learn how to read, it was actually with Spider-Man comic books that I learned how to read. And one of the first uh, books that I read when I learned how to read was I read the, the uh, reprints of the 1960s original Spider-Man stories by Steve Ditko and Stan Lee. The ones that were published before I was even born. I read all those first. And then as I got even older, I started reading, you know, the modern stuff, you know. And of course, when I was a little, little tiny little boy, I watched uh, Spider-Man on the Electric Company where he did not speak, you know. But I do remember that Morgan Freeman helped me learn how to read. And so I did read a Marino. Yeah, the one from West Side Story. Yeah, that, that way, Rita Marino. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, there was that, but that Spider Man didn't speak. And then, of course, I watched the 1970s Spider Man starring Nicholas Hammond, who I did not know was in The Sound of Music, but apparently he was. <clears throat> oh, well. Um, but yes, he was, he was the first Spider Man, live action Spider Man I saw on TV that actually spoke. Uh, and I love that Spider-Man. Even now, as, a, as an adult, I watch it now, and I'm like, okay, the show wasn't that good. But when you're a little kid, it was my favorite show in the whole world, and nobody can take that away from me. All right? I love Spider-Man. If you were a kid in the late 70s, Spider-Man was really, really big. It was really, really big. And I watched those reruns in my grandma's basement, the, the, the Spider-Man cartoon from the 60s. Even the psychedelic ones where everyone was stoned. Uh, you know, you, you know the ones I'm talking about, the, the, the old Spider-Man cartoon. Yeah, yeah, the Ralph Bashke episodes where all the bad guys got green skin here, like jazz beatnik music. You know. Anyway, <clears throat> so the point is, I've been in love with Spider-Man my entire life. And then as an adult, uh, when in 2002, right after September 11th, remember that, right after September 11th, uh, the new Spider-Man movie came out, starring Tobey Maguire. Uh, the rights had been in limbo for a long time. There was a big legal battle between who owned the rights for Spider-Man movie. So Sony thought they owned it. Caracol thought they owned it. You know, New Line Cinema thought they owned it. So there's a big legal battle. At one point, James Cameron uh, was hired to, uh, to, to make a Spider-Man movie in the 80s. Uh, but uh, he actually wrote the script for it, but then he abandoned it because, you know, because of the rights. Uh, nobody could claim the rights to Spider-Man, so there was no Spider-Man movie. Instead, we got, like, you know, fucking Batman and Robin and shit, right? Uh, but we did get Blade, and Blade was was good. And then, of course, uh, in 2000, uh, the X-Men movie came out with Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen, and that one was a big blockbuster. So we felt a little bit safer in 2002 when Spider-Man got announced, but then, of course, September 11th happened. And, uh, you know, they were kind of like, oh, should we really make a movie about downtown New York, you know, after what happened? But they did it anyway. The money, I mean, they already spent the money for it. Uh, they announced that, um, they announced that Tobey Maguire was going to play Spider-Man, who I did not know who the hell he was. Uh, I guess he was in Pleasantville, which I'd never seen at that time, but I didn't know who the hell he was. But the point is he was playing Spider-Man. I did look, uh, on, I did do a little bit of research on him and I found out that him and I are the same age and he's playing Spider-Man and I'm not. What the fuck? Anyway. So uh, the movie comes out, absolutely loved it. I, I went to the theater seven times in 2002. I went to the theater seven times. Think about it. I went to the theater seven goddamn times to see that movie. That's how much I loved it. Looking back on it now, uh, the Green Goblin looked like shit. <laughs> William Dafoe knocked it out of the park as Norman Osborn. But the Green Goblin costume, it looked, it looked terrible. It really did. I didn't like it at all. A couple things I didn't like about it, but for the most part, it was a great movie. It was my favorite superhero movie of all time until 2004 when Spider-Man 2 came out. I remember that one too. I went to opening night for that one, midnight showing. Absolutely loved that movie. I fell in love with that movie. Oh my God, Alpha Molina played a better Dr. Octopus than the Dr. Octopus from the comic book. He was actually better Dr. Octopus than the Dr. Octopus from the comic book. You know, uh, sympathetic. Excellent, excellent. I even like James Franco as Harry Osborn. You know, he's starting to turn to the dark side and... 
it was such a great, great story. I remember reading the book. Um, one of the guys that wrote the screenplay for Spider-Man 2 was um, Michael Chabon, who won the Pulitzer for writing the, uh, the novel um, The Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. If you have not read that novel, um, it's about the golden age of comic books in the 1930s in New York. Um, and uh, it's, it's beautiful. He, he earned his Pulitzer Prize for that novel, that novel alone. Uh, the, the Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. But anyway, uh, I absolutely loved that book. I thought it was one of the best novels I ever read. And then I found out that he was actually one of the writers of Spider-Man 2. No wonder it was so goddamn good. No wonder it was so good, Spider-Man 2. Love, that was my favorite superhero movie of all time. My favorite Spider-Man movie of all time. It was. I said it was. Until today. Spider-Man 3 came out. It was a piece of shit. Nobody liked it. But I did like Thomas Hayden Church. He did a good, do a good sympathetic Sandman. Uh, I liked Venom. Venom did not act like Venom. He, well, I'm sorry. He did act like Venom. He did not... Well, okay. He looked like Venom. Eddie Brock did not look like Venom. Okay? He did not sound like Venom. Acted like Venom. When he was in his symbiote suit, he looked like Venom. Although I wish Venom had talked. Um... But yeah, that voice that he had is Venom, you know, you want to kill the spider. I want to kill the spider. That's not how fucking Venom talks. All right. So I did not like that. So that kind of ruined it for me. But I like the way Venom looked. Whatever. Boom. I did like uh, Spider-Man 3. I know most people didn't like it. I liked it. I, re I read the comic books. Okay. I knew about the alien suit. I know all that shit. Okay. So then they decided to reboot. 2012. The Amazing Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield was too cool to be Peter Parker. Too cool. Uh, he's dating Gwen Stacy right off the bat. Now I know they're dating in real life, you know. Uh, they had great chemistry together, but but he didn't. But Peter didn't meet Gwen Stacy until he was in college. Okay, that same time around the same, same time he met you know Mary Jane. Okay, in high school he dated Betty Brant, who was not a high school student. She worked for J. Jonah Jameson. She was his secretary. That was his girlfriend when he was in high school. Uh, he didn't meet uh, MJ or Gwen Stacy until he was in college. Same thing with Harry, with Harry Osborne. Didn't meet Harry Osborne until he was in college. All right, so, um, yeah, the lizard was the bad guy. Who cares? Uh, really, I mean, I, I remember thinking to myself, okay, on the list of the top 10 villains that Spider-Man's ever had, the lizard would have been probably number 13, <laughs> maybe number 11. <laughs> okay, not not, not an A-list villain uh, for Spider-Man. A, a Spider-Man villain, not an A-list Spider-Man villain. But he would work really good if they ever did, like, a, a Sinister Six movie. <laughs> Anyway, so then, so that was that. Um, I liked it, but it wasn't it wasn't that great. Um, Spider Man Two. I mean, Spider Man Two comes out. Okay, that was an abomination. Okay, I want to say abortion, but it was that too. Uh, I, I, I liked I liked um, Andrew Garfield as Spider Man again. I, I liked him as Spider Man, not so much as Peter Parker because he was too cool for Peter Parker. You know, the skateboard and the hoodie. The you know, he didn't seem like a nerd. Uh, you know, but. Um, as Spider-Man, he did. He had the one line. He had the jokes. You know, he had the body language. You know, I like the costume better in this one. Uh, the Rhino was a piece of shit. I mean, the Rhino doesn't wear a mechanical Rhino suit. He's he's got the goods. He's like the Hulk. He's got the goods. Um, oh God, what do I remember? Me Spider-Man too. Who was the bag? Oh yeah, Green Goblin and Electro. Okay, uh, they they took it right out of the freaking The Incredibles. You know, uh, pretty much. You know, Batman, uh, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. You know, I mean, the the nerdy guy who worships a superhero, he feels rejected by the superhero, so he becomes evil. Come on, man. We've seen that shit before. And Jamie Foxx just played it to the hell. I mean, come on. Nerdy guy gets electric powers because he's going to kill Spider-Man because you humiliated me. You didn't respect me. Yeah. All right. Uh, I thought Jamie Foxx could have done better. He, he, the character of Electro in the comic books was not a nerd that became a super villain. He was actually already an asshole. That just got superpowers, okay, and decided to use his powers to, you know, to be a bigger asshole, okay. Um, so that was Max Dillon, um, and then of course, uh, who was it? Oh yeah, the Green Goblin. We get another Harry Osborn, and I'm sorry, but James Franco did it better. And this, this, this hair, this Harry Osborn kills. We don't even get Norman Osborn yet. I mean, we see him, but he's not the Green Goblin. And then this, this Harry Osborn kills Gwen Stacy. They got that part right. I didn't really like the movie. But that part where they kill, I thought they had a lot of balls to kill off Gwen Stacy. Um, they got that part right. That part I did like. The rest of the movie I didn't really like. I didn't. But that part there I liked a lot. And, and I liked Andrew Garfield's performance. 
as Spider-Man. He did, he did a really good job. And then he played the emotion when, when Gwen died. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, but then, of course, you know, the, the, the problems happened with Sony and all that. Like, he got fired from being Spider-Man. They decided they wanted to reboot it all again. Blah, blah, blah. All this happens. And then eventually they decide to put Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe. They made a deal with Disney. So that happens. Then we get Tom Holland, who... Okay, if you've seen my video for the trailer, all right, then you know goddamn well that's not Spider-Man. That's Iron Boy. We're in a Spider-Man costume. That's Iron Boy. That's not Spider-Man. Gosh, Mr. Stark! What are we going to do, Aunt May? Oh, my God! You know, I'm so nervous around girls. You know, I don't know what to do. Oh, my God! That's not fucking Peter Parker. I don't know what the fuck that is. It's an interesting character. Don't get me wrong. I could watch that movie. I did watch the movie. I thought he was interesting. He's entertaining. But that's not, that's not Peter Parker. That's not Spider-Man. That's Iron Boy. Spider-Man doesn't have an AI suit with all these gadgets and powers in it. That's, that's, he, he is the superhuman. He doesn't have a suit that gives him powers. He is the superhuman wearing a suit. Okay? Um, and and they, they just got that wrong. They wanted to play the whole, like, you know, Tony Stark's, you know, adopted son type shit, which that never happened in the comic books. He never looked at Tony Stark as a father figure. He looked at him more like as an employer for a while and then as a rival and then as a friend or as, as a cool guy. That he knows, they can brag. Hey, I know Tony Stark, you know, but didn't give him a job or anything like that, you know. So no, no, he's an interesting character, but it's not Spider-Man, and uh, that's what they did. Is you know the whole the whole Spider-Man little family there. He's got the hot Aunt May, which she was not hot in the comic book. She was more of a uh, grandmotherly type maternal figure, you know, not not a maternal figure, you know. Um, she was a widow, you know. She was out there dating all these people, you know. Um, what else? Uh, you know, and his, I'm sorry, you know, the, but the, that the Zendaya just doesn't do it for me. That's not Mary Jane Watson. That's 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 a, a black girl that Spider-Man likes named Michelle. That's not Mary Jane Watson. Um, apparently, this Spider-Man only only likes black girls. Why? I don't know why. Um, you know, you, you could call me a racist for that, but I'm going to call you a racist back because why won't he date a white girl? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, so there's that, um, and then of course his best friend Ned Leeds, who's this Loatian Hawaiian overweight kid, who's a cool kid to have. I mean, I mean they're they're obviously good friends, but he wasn't in the comic books. Ned Leeds in the comic books was actually a, a, a white guy who was dating Betty Brant, who was a, a who was a secretary for J. Jonah Jameson at the Daily Bugle. She did not go to high school with Spider Man. Um, she actually. Uh, Dated him after her and Peter broke up. She started dating Ned Lee. She married him. He was a hobgoblin for a while. And it turns out he wasn't a hobgoblin. But he wasn't this fat Loatian kid who was best friends with, with Peter Parker. No, that never happened. Uh, Flash Thompson was not some Indian asshole on YouTube. He was a, a, he was a football player who, you know, tall, muscular, redhead kid who you know, used to pick on Peter Parker all the time. Who bullied him all the time. You know, later on they become friends. But he wasn't some, you know, some just some jerk off, you know, Indian guy. You know, that's not what he was. He was a white guy. You can call me a racist on that one too. I don't care. You know, if, if I was such a racist, then why, why did they make the Indian guy such an asshole? Hmm? Why is the Indian guy such an asshole? I ask you that. All right. Uh, so there's that. So, so we got the supporting characters. But I never really liked, but they work good for this character. This is not Spider-Man, but he's an interesting character. He's Iron Boy. I'm going to call him Iron Boy. He's Iron Boy. Okay. Iron Boy is a cool superhero. He's a cool superhero. I like him. I'm not in love with him, but I like him. Uh, his friends, his girlfriend, they're okay. You know, he's friends with the Avengers. You know, he's got the Indian with Doctor Strange. So anyway, uh, so as we left off in the last movie, they fight Mysterio. Jake Gyllenhaal did a great job. Great job as Mysterio. As Quentin Beck, he was, he was awesome as that. Uh, you know, he, he outs Peter Parker to the world. So because like, the media's all over him, the cops are looking for him. Blah, blah, blah. He's going to need a lawyer. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I was just going crazy watching this thing, all right? He's going to need a lawyer, you know. Um, they're even investigating Stark Industries because all, all the holographic technology Mysterio used was created by Stark, you know, which it was. That Mysterio appropriated. So um, so all that's going on here. We've got J.J. and Jameson again. He's more, he's more relevant in this show. Okay, but now we're going to get to the goods. Okay, to start off with, uh, they are investigating Peter Parker. He's Spider-Man, but it turns out he didn't break any laws. He gets a lawyer. And who is his lawyer? Da-da! Daredevil. That's right. Charlie Cox. Daredevil from the TV show. The Netflix show Daredevil is in the goddamn movie. He is Matthew Murdock, the blind attorney, and he represents Peter Parker. Ha! 
I was like, yes, yes, yes. I couldn't believe it when I saw him there. Um, they're talking in there. Of course, uh, people are harassing Peter because they all know he's Spider-Man. At one point, someone throws a brick through his window. Peter's about to grab it, but instead, whoosh, Matt Murdock grabs it. Even though he's blind, he grabs it. And, and Peter's like, how'd you do that? And he just like says something like, uh, you know, I'm a pretty good lawyer. You know, <laughs> oh, they got Charlie Cox. All right, so Daredevil is officially with Spider-Man. Yes, 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 yes. All right, and we, and we got more to go. All right, so here we are. So he gets cleared. Uh, they're gonna investigate Stark, they're gonna investigate Happy Hogan, but they're not gonna investigate Peter Parker. However, everyone's harassing him. So uh, of course, uh, Aunt May, she broke up with Happy. They're not dating anymore, but she asked him for a favor. Hey, we need a place to stay, we can't stay here anymore. Everyone knows our address, you know, blah, blah. It's only a matter of time before we get hurt. So they end up living, I guess, in Stark Tower. I, I don't remember for sure. But it's a nice posh apartment, you know, all the modern conveniences and everything. Everything's all cool. And uh, it turns out that um, that Peter got rejected from MIT. So did uh, so did Mary Jane. And so did uh, Ned Lee. They all got rejected because of Spider-Man. Because all, all the publicity around Spider-Man and them in particular. Because everyone knows that they're friends. Flash Thompson even writes a book. Hey, I'm Spider-Man's best friend called Flashpoint. He does a little commercial for it, Even though it, it's stupid. Uh, but I, I get the running joke. Like the teachers. Remember those two teachers? The white guy and the black guy? The one who believes in witches. And, and, the, other, and the white teacher that, you know... Sometimes misplaces his students. Yeah, well, they, they build it. There was a joke when he goes to high school and they build this, this shrine for him. Of course, all the kids are looking at him. They all want to take their picture of him. You know, it's, it's just, it's just kind of ridiculous that he would even go to school after he'd been outed like that, you know. Um, so, um, so that all happens. And then uh, it turns out that because uh, Peter got rejected from MIT, what are they going to do about it? Like, he finally realized that it was a mistake that everybody knows that he's Spider-Man. He needs to make the world forget that he's Spider-Man. So, he, but he, basically what he does, he goes to Doctor Strange. And he says, hey, Doctor Strange, I want you to cast a spell so that uh, everybody that knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, um, I guess, doesn't know it yet or something, or forgets it or something like that. So, Doctor Strange is like, okay, you know, but now we're in sitcom territory. Because Doctor Strange... He's not the Sorcerer Supreme anymore. Wong, Wong is the Sorcerer Supreme now because Dr. Strange disappeared for five years. <clears throat> so he lost his title as Sorcerer Supreme. Wong picked it up. So Wong's actually the Sorcerer Supreme now. Uh, but Dr. Strange is there. He's still, you know, being Dr. Strange, you know. Uh, but the, 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 they've kind of gone into like, um, like, like sitcom territory here with the jokes and stuff between, you know, Dr. Strange and, 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 and Iron Boy. So all that's going on. He, he decides to cast a spell to help Peter, to make, to make everybody that knows he's Spider-Man forget. But then he keeps amending it the whole time he's trying to cast a spell, you know, and Doctor Strange keeps indulging him. Like, okay, so this person, oh, but this person can remember you. Okay, but, all right, just a spell. Oh, okay, but that person can remember you. Okay, but just, oh, so now you want, quit telling me to amend the spell while, while I'm in the middle of the spell. So anyway, the spell goes wrong. Doctor Strange contains it. Boom. He thinks that's over. And then he finds out that, Peter tells him that, okay, the reason I wanted you to make the spell is because I didn't get into MIT. And Dr. Strange's like, well, you know, I'm sorry that you tried to talk to those, the, to the, um, the admissions department at MIT. I'm sorry they rejected you, but, you know, you're just going to have to deal with life. He's like, oh, well, I never actually did that. What? I never actually spoke to anyone at MIT and asked them to reconsider my rejection. He's like, and you wanted me to base a spell to make the whole world forget about you? You know, so it's kind of like dumb, you know. But anyway, it happens. So he goes, to, he goes to track down the admissions counselor at MIT. She's this black woman that's in a car. They're on the highway. On his way over there, Dr. Octopus shows up. And the Alfred Molina, Dr. Octopus. Yes. Uh, the one that we all loved. Uh, he was incredible. I mean, people remember him as, as from the one from, from uh, Raiders of Lost Ark. Remember, he's like, throw me the idol. I throw you the weep. You know? <laughs> Adios, senor. Yeah, that one. That's Alfred Molina. Okay. Uh, so yeah, he shows up and of course he recognizes Spider-Man, you know, and they have their fight again and it's just so great seeing, seeing the villain from my favorite Spider-Man movie, fighting Spider-Man. <laughs> it was so awesome. Oh my God, it was so awesome. And, and they're fighting, blah, 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 and Dr. Octopus has got, he's, you know, he's, he's actually fighting better now, but it's him. Like, who else can play Dr. Octopus except Alfred Molina? Because he did such a great job. In, in the 2004 movie. And he's fighting this Iron Boy here. And of course, Iron Boy shows off his arms too. And, and they're going back and forth, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's pretty good. Finally, he uses the nanotechnology to take over Dr. Octopus' arms. And that's how he captures him. So he catches Dr. Octopus by taking over his arms with the nanotechnology from the Spider-Man suit, from the Iron Boy suit. All right, so that, there's that. 
he's trying to reason with them, but this is the evil Dr. Octopus, you know, the one that the, the arms are telling him what to do, you know. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, so that happens, he captures him, and then boom, here comes uh, the Green Goblin. We only see him in that stupid-ass Green Goblin outfit for like an, for you know, a couple of seconds, you know, the one from the original movie. Of course, uh, Dr. Octopus recognizes that's Norman Osborn. And, he, and, and, and Iron Boy's like, who? Who's that? Who's Norman Osborn? Who, who's that? You know, anyway, he gets away, but he throws some pumpkin bombs first. So they capture Dr. Octopus. They take him back to the lair. Uh, it turns out what Dr. Strange is going to do is like, okay, all these anomalies that are out here, when we cast a spell, all these, everybody who knew you that Peter Parker was Spider-Man started arriving in our universe. It wasn't just the ones from this universe. It was ones from all the universes. And eventually they're all going to come here. That's an infinite number of people are going to arrive here. Okay, so we have to put them all back. You need to capture them and we got to send them back. So that's the goal. Okay, they already caught one, Dr. Octopus. He's being unreasonable. What am I doing here? Who are you? You're not Peter Parker. That kind of thing. Uh, so that's all going on. Um, and then, of course, you know, the Green Goblin, he shows up and it's William Dafoe. Yes, yes. You know, I'm a bit of a scientist myself. You know, that William Dafoe, that Green Goblin, the only guy ever played Green Goblin, the best Green Goblin, all right? He's there. He's talking to Aunt May. He, he's, he's having his dual personality. You know, he's nice, and then he's not nice, you know? Like, the Goblin personality takes over, and sometimes he doesn't. Well, when he's nice, when he's regular Norman Osborn, he's, he's at the homeless shelter talking to Aunt May. You know, he's explaining his situation. Like, I don't know where I am. My company's not here. Nobody knows me here. Blah, blah, blah. You know, so, you know, Iron Boy's like, hey, let me help you. Blah, blah, blah. Let me take you back to the... You know, Doctor Strange's headquarters, you know, we'll talk about it. You know, I'll, I'll help you get back home. That kind of thing. You're an aberration. You're not supposed to be here. This and that. Boom. So anyway, Spider-Man goes off looking for these aberrations. And who's he run into? Electro! Jamie Foxx, who I absolutely could not stand in Amazing Spider-Man. But here, he's actually pretty cool. You know, he shows up. He's like, I was fighting Spider-Man. And then next thing you know, I'm here. You know, and he's absorbing all the electricity. And he's changing. He's, he gets his body back. But, but the electricity is absorbed now is yellow instead of, you know, blue. Um, but he's still an asshole. And uh, he's fighting Spider-Man. And, Spider and then all of a sudden, boom, the sand comes up the ground. It's Sandman. Thomas Hayden Church is back as Sandman. And he's protecting Spider-Man. He's like, Peter, Peter, don't you remember me? And he's like, who are you? He's like, it's me. It's Flint Marco. Oh, yeah, Thomas Hayden Church is back as, as, as Sandman. Woo! Okay, we got the Sinister Six here. Oh my God, the Sinister are fucking six in a movie. This is like this is like a, like Infinity War, but for Spider Man. Oh my God! So I'm just I'm flipping out, right? I'm like, oh my God, you got you got the Sandman. You got, and then fucking the lizard shows up. They catch the fucking lizard. Doctor Strange catches the lizard. It's fucking Kirk Connors. Oh my God. They got him in traps. So they trap all these guys. Some more. And it's the original actors too from the movies. It's not some stand -in. These are the original. This is an all-star cast. All-star cast. Okay? We got major fucking actors in here. Jamie Foxx. Fucking William Dafoe. Alfred Molina. You know, Thomas Hayden Church. Oh, God. It's like... J.K. Simmons. Jake Killencall has a cameo as Mysterio. Oh, who else who am I forgetting here? Oh, yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. I mean, this is an all-star movie. Okay, all-star movie. And guess what? It's only going to get better. All right? So this is all going on, right? They got Now they got the Sinister Six all trapped. Except, except for the Green Goblin. Norman Osborn still out there. Uh... Uh, Iron Boy Peter has to actually go to Aunt May's, I guess her halfway house or whatever, to get him. Because he's in his nice form now, and they bring him, he has to talk him into coming back with him. And so he brings him back to the lair where they got all of them imprisoned. And it's really cool, one of the best parts is that some of them know each other, and they call that out. Okay, for example, um, uh, what do you call Electro recognizes the lizard. He's like, yeah, that's Kirk Connors. Like, Who? That's Kirk Connors. He, he invented some formula that turned him into a lizard. He tried to turn the whole city of New York into lizards. You know? And he's like, what? And he goes, I recognize you. You worked for Oscorp. You were the electrician for Oscorp. They're like, the lizard talks? He's like, yes, I do talk. It's the original actor from Amazing Spider-Man. You know? He's like, I'm not that nerd anymore. Now I've got real power. You know, so they recognize each other. And of course, you know, Sandman, Flint Marco recognizes Dr. Octopus. He's like, yeah, you're Dr. Octopus. 
you 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 you, you tried to kill Spider-Man, but you died a few years ago, and, and that that's Norman Osborn. He died a few years ago too. He tried to kill Spider-Man too. They're like what? What? Like they know each other. And of course, you know William Defoe. You know Norman Osborn recognizes Otto Octavius. He's like what you? I don't Octavius, what are you doing locked up here? You know, that kind of thing. It's just little things like that are so fucking awesome. That they all know each other. Some of them know each other. Some of them don't, you know? And you go, well, we're building up to this. We're building up to it, all right? So so all this is going on. Um, spite, uh, Dr. Strange says, we have to send these people back, which means they're going to die. Because it turns out that all of them died fighting Spider-Man. Except for uh, a couple of them didn't die. I don't think, I don't think Electro died. Uh, I don't think uh, the Lizard died. Uh, and Sandman didn't die, but like Dr. Octopus died fighting Spider-Man. Uh, Green Goblin died fighting Spider-Man. So Tom Holland and Iron Boy does not want to send them back if they're going to die. But, you know, Dr. Strange, like we have to, that's how it's got to be. And Spider-Man is like, nope. Uh-uh. He takes the box and he tries to get away. So there's a big battle between um, Dr. Strange and, and Iron Boy. Okay. And finally... Doctor Strange is getting pissed because he's just getting pissed off that, that that Iron Boy is like is like holding him back. So finally, Doctor Strange just sends him into the mirror universe. Remember that the, the Inception universe where the buildings all turn inside out. You know, he sends him in there. He's like, in here, I'm in charge. They get to a big fight, but Spider, but Iron Boy still outsmarts him and traps him there and takes away his little thingy dig that he opens the portals with. He takes it away from him and traps Doctor Strange there. Okay. These are Steve Ditko created. Steve Ditko created Spider-Man. He also created Doctor Strange. The same artist created both of them. And they're fighting each other. And Spider-Man wins. And he leaves Doctor Strange trapped there. Comes back in, into, into this world. Or, or so, so-called. And he's like, okay, we still got to go catch this person and this person. So, uh, so he's off to do his own thing. And then finally, I'm trying to remember what, what the excuse was. But for some reason... Uh, he decides, okay, I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna have to free you guys. I'm gonna fix you guys. Instead of sending you back where you're gonna die, I'm gonna cure you. And they're like, what do you mean cure us? Is I'm gonna turn you good again? Okay, whatever happened to you that made you evil, I'm gonna reverse it and turn. Because I got this machine that I got in the last movie, the Far From Home movie that, that made the, my costume. I'm gonna make something with this machine to turn all of you back to normal, fix all of you. That's what he promises, you know. And, and they agree to it, you know. Uh, for the most part, and uh, and that happens. So he's he's working on that quest, and then finally Mary Jane and uh, and Ned Leeds. They're I guess they're bored or something. And it turns out Ned Leeds can actually open up portals. So he decides that they're looking for for um, for Peter Parker. They're looking for Spider Man, but uh, Spider Man lets them all out of jail and takes them back to his apartment. <laughs> yeah, like that would ever happen, right? <laughs> And I guess he's got the machine there. And he's like, okay, so we're going to do this and we're going to do this. And he actually succeeds in, in curing uh, Dr. Octopus. He fixes he fixes the chip. Remember the chip, that, the inhibitor chip that he had in the back that, that, that malfunctioned when he became Dr. Octopus, made him evil? Well, he fixes it, makes a better one, puts it in there. That makes Dr. Octopus normal again. It makes him back into Otto Octavius. So he's nice again. He builds a device to suck away all the, elect all the electricity out of Electro. So that he doesn't, you know, go crazy again. But he has second thoughts about it. He kind of likes the power. He likes smelling the electricity. He kind of wants to absorb. He wants to absorb it all. He doesn't want to, like, really give it up. He wants to keep his electrical powers. Sandman agrees to help because he wants to get back home so he can see his daughter. Because remember her, the one that was sick? She, was, she had that disease. He was trying to, she was stealing money. He was stealing to, to pay for the medical bills for her. Remember that? So he's just trying to get back to his daughter. Uh, the lizard, I think they keep him locked up because he's, he's not, he's a lizard. He's not going to change. Okay. He, he wants to turn everyone into a lizard. Okay. <laughs> and he's still locked up in there. Uh, it's funny because he's got a British accent and stuff. It was a British guy that played him. He was American in the comic book. But anyway, uh, so there's that. Um, so they're all, all these super villains are hanging out at, at Spider-Man and Aunt May's apartment that they're, that they're borrowing. Okay. So all that happens, uh, there ends up, you know, drama ensues and eventually the Green Goblin persona comes back and takes over and decides, hey, I'm going to run this show now. Boom. And that's where I'm going to leave off part one. And then I will go back again. And in part two, we will continue with the movie review. I've got a lot more surprises. And there's a lot more excitement.